know what National Lampoon is. People of my generation and generations beforehand do know what National Lampoon is, although people of my generation probably know it mostly from its films. But actually it started out from something different, a magazine, and this film dives into that, while also telling the story of co-creator Douglas Kenny and his highs and lows in life. Now, very few biographical drama films or films about true stories really hit me in a way that I really, really liked them. I really liked this one. This is one of the few that I really liked, and it kind of spoke to me in a way that I has no biographical film has done in a while. Um, but the best thing is, though, is this film is more of a dramedy than a full-blown drama. It does have dramatic moments, but it's full of comedic moments as well. And it's, in a way, pulling a National Lampoon, parodying and making fun of biographical films, and also just mainly making jokes particularly with the creation of Martin Mole's character, who is the older Douglas Kenny, uh, narrating the whole film and uh, weaving us through this story and, and kind of dis discussing things and um, basically trying to help you understand what's going on, because this is, this, all this happened at a time that was different from ours, and also he's summarizing things, because as they pointed out in the film, this is a movie, we can't tell everything. Um, and Martin Martin Mole's character was great, particularly in the beginning, because in the beginning they were showing uh, Douglas's early life with his family who treated him like shit, and then all of a sudden he go, Martin Mole goes, no, 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 don't start there, don't start with my fucked up family, everybody has a fucked up family. And he cuts to him in front of a collage of National Lampoon stuff, and somebody in the background goes, and behind the camera goes, oh, why don't you just tell us who you are, and he describes who he is and this and that, and somebody off camera says, why don't you say I changed comedy, and Martin Mole goes, no, that's blowing smoke on my own ass, I'm not going to say that. And then the guy goes, oh, why don't you say, I changed the face of comedy, but I couldn't change myself. And Martin goes, really? Blow me. <laughs> and they, they start the whole movie, and this and that. It's fun, and he comes in and out to describe what's going on, and also, like, um, they make fun of it. Like I said, they make fun of this film being a biographical drama, pointing out all the flaws and stuff. Like, later, when National Poon's Green created, and they talk about how they hired a bunch of writers for the magazine... Martin Mull goes, well, we hired these people, and then there were a bunch of other people who we hired, and he starts naming them, and then these people come onto the screen, and he says, but we didn't have time for that, we can only fit into four different people, so, sorry guys, and they all leave, and then uh, he said, and then later after all that's done, he says, there were some most of the things we changed as well, here's a list of them, and cuts to a wall, and there's this word crawl of all the things that they changed, and what really happened throughout this time period, and at one point he goes, if you actually pause and read it, they actually tell everything. And at one point it says, the rest from here on is spoilers, but if you watch the movie and then come back to this part, we'll be here. And it tell, again, tells whatever happens to the rest of the movie, what really happened and not what they abridged and changed. And at the bottom it says, uh, if you see any other things, go email us at corrections, uh, corrections at gofuckyourself.com. <laughs> it was hilarious. And they keep, they keep that up throughout the show. Like, um, like when they do the radio show, they they show uh, the actors who are portraying these real actors, like uh, the actor uh, like Chevy Chase, James Belushi, Bill Murray, blah blah blah. And Mark Mole comes in and says, "Now these actors don't really look like the actors are portraying, but come on, do you think I look like Will Forte when I was 27? Do you think Will Forte is 27?" Um, so they make fun of that, and it's great how they make a National Lampoon-style biographical drama. And I kind of consider this movie a dramedy as opposed to just a drama or a comedy. Because um, it does have its serious moments, because Doug Kenny's life did hit serious lows. And those moments were really well done. I mean, Will Forte, who is mostly known from his comedy, and this, like I said, this movie was treat is treated like a comedy and a drama. There's a lot more comedy than drama in this, in this movie. And, but they play those dramatic moments realistic. They didn't try and parody it or poke fun at it. They really made them, made you feel for these characters. They made these performances real. They didn't try to make it silly or just, you know, hammy. They really acted in those dramatic scenes. And it kind of made, gave more, the comedy more weight to it, too. Um, overall, the, sto the story is good. 
if you know the history, it's portrayed pretty well, and you can understand why they shorten certain things and change certain things. Um, the actors are all well done. The uh, particularly the actor who portrays Chevy Chase, I was very much uh, impressed by. I forgot who the actor's name is, but he looked like him. He even had the I don't know if it was enhanced by makeup, but he had that the Chevy Chase's chin. And there's this one point where he kind of defends Douglas Kenny because he's with his parents, and the parents kind of mock their son. So the actor does kind of like the thing that Chevy Chase is most known for, which is his clumsiness. And he does the, one of the pratfalls and clumsiness by breaking dishes and stuff. And it it looked like Chevy Chase. I mean, if you've seen Chevy Chase's sketches from Saturday Night Live and other things, you would just could have sworn Chevy Chase walked onto this moment and did his little pratfall. It was amazing. Um... You know, it's, it is well written, and it's fun to watch. I, I've watched this movie several times already. It is great and enjoyable. Um, it was just beautiful. I, I really can't explain it any other way. And, um, you know, I'm sure it does have its flaws. I'm sure it does. But watching this movie, I kind of didn't care about any of the flaws. I just watched this movie. It, it just, just... It just really connected to me in a way that uh, not many have beforehand. It just reminded me of good humor, um, not as PC friendly humor. <laughs> um, it just reminded me of just a lot of different things, and also is a story that I'm that I was interested in because I saw a documentary, which I will mention later in this v video about. And um, you know, it, it also just reminded me of the movies, the National Lampoon movies I watched when I was growing up. Um, yeah, it, it was really, really good. I do recommend this movie for a lot, particularly if you like biographical films or you know of National Lampoon and you want to see what the story is of National Lampoon, I do really suggest this movie. Um, I would have to give this movie four stars out of five. It is just fantastic. Very well done in every aspect of this movie. Um, now, before you watch this movie, or even after watching this movie, or both, um, whichever you want to do first, I do suggest you watch the documentary film Blind, Drunk, Brilliant, Dead. And it is the documentary about the creation of National Lampoon through, uh, to its height, lows, and then eventual disbandment, because National Lampoon eventually did break down and close. Um, and that is a great documentary. It actually tells the whole truth, no abridgments or anything like that and has the, the people that are still alive that were associated with National Lampoon in interviews, and they talk about the whole history, about their jokes, about the controversies, every little thing they did for the for the National Lampoon, and also about Doug Kenny and the other co-creators and this and that. It really got, went through everything. And if you watch that before and after, you can see how they the movie respected that documentary as well as a book they adapted as well. And they kind of show how everything was abridged, what, what they really adapted, like certain scenarios, like Henry Beard, the other co-creator, in in real life and in the movie, when he quit, he did go out into the bullpen among the other writers and stuff and said, I hated every minute of this, fuck you, and walked out. That actually happened. <laughs> and so you can kind of see how they did that and how these characters were portrayed. And it's kind of fun picking that both movie and the documentary apart, seeing how they well they did. Um, so yeah, I recommend both of those for everybody to watch. Um, <laughs> and it's just just really amazing how something like that came about. How a National Lampoon came about, how it kind of not only changed comedy, how it inspired comedy to this day, and just basically everything about it. I mean, how it not necessarily changed comedy the way we see it, it just kind of like inspired a lot of good comedies. And just kind of showed, you know what, we don't have to follow the same standard of comedy. We can change it over time, whether it, uh, whether it is offensive or not offensive or just basically good, clean fun. So with that, I bid you adieu and good night.